Welcome back, my friends, to the Dime Store Cinema, where we discuss movies and culture. I love Jim Jarmusch films. He has directed several of my favorite movies and has written some of my favorite lines of dialogue. I don't think I would have the same love for cinema if I hadn't seen films like Down by Law, Coffee and Cigarettes, Ghost Dog, and Patterson. There's something to the slow, methodical presentation of his characters that really speaks to me. His version of normalcy inhabits my brain, so I haven't smoked a cigarette or drank a cup of coffee the same way since seeing Coffee and Cigarettes. Coffee and Cigarettes was the first of his movies that I watched. Originally, I sought it out to see the scene with the white stripes. It was in watching this movie, though, that I discovered Tom Waits, who is now my favorite musician. His scene with Iggy Pop is amazing, cringy, and hilarious. What are you saying, man? Are you saying, like, I'm a Taco Bell kind of guy? Brilliant. Over the years, I've kept a tentative eye out for Jim's work and have since seen most of his feature-length endeavors. I love the way he tells stories. They're always offbeat and slightly strange, yet they tend to be oddly relatable. I recently watched The Dead Don't Die, one of his most recent works, and noticed a slightly more melancholic tone. He always seems to have a neurotic view of things, but there's always an appreciation for how complex, interesting, and beautiful the world is. In The Dead Don't Die, much of that appreciation seems to have been left out, culminating with the last line in the movie, What a fucked up world. This line is in direct contrast with my favorite movie line of all time, It is a sad and beautiful world, from Down by Law. It's such an insightful thing to say, It encapsulates nearly the entirety of the human relationship with the world. What makes it even more brilliant and enjoyable, though, is that the line is delivered by Roberto Benigni's character, who only has a tenuous grasp of the English language. Out of the mouths of babes, I believe the old saying goes. Down by Law itself is kind of a representation of the tragedy and beauty of the world we live in. The audience is constantly treated to the juxtaposition, be it through a lovely, intelligent prostitute, burgeoning friendships in prison, camaraderie in escape, or finding love in a swamp. Jim Jarmusch wrote and directed this movie the way a poet would, including dramatic irony in a song-like story progression. Jarmusch has always had an interesting relationship with music in his movies. It's obvious he he is a music lover, not least of which made evident by casting Tom Waits and Iggy Pop in a number of his movies. Down by Law, as a whole, almost feels like a fleshed-out imagining of a Tom Waits song. It feels like the kind of adventure you would have if you hopped a freight train with without knowing its destination or started walking down an unfamiliar road with no intention of returning to where you started. It's it's interesting to see the difference in sentiment between Down by Law from 1986 and The Dead Don't Die from 2019. Over the years, Jamush's view of the world seems to have devolved from an acceptance of an appreciation for the world to instead a detached bewilderment. Maybe it's cynicism. Maybe it's the unwillingness to accept the role of technology, but through the grizzled voiceover of Tom Waits, Jim Jarmusch mutters his disdain for consumerism, culminating with the declaration that it's a fucked up world. The tempestuous relationship between the sad and the beautiful is now replaced with the fucked. There's something to be said for the general feeling of discontent and malaise many have been suffering through lately. It seems consumption has replaced creation. It's an apt cultural criticism. Popular music glorifies hedonism with no insight or interest in the betterment of self or society. 
With that, Dramush goes the opposite route and finds an old-sounding country-western song. Social media is a never-ending search for a dopamine hit via thumbs up. Eyes are constantly eating up light, so we're not sleeping, so we're not thinking. I understand the purposefully on-the-nose metaphor of zombies. To lose sight of beauty, though, is to lose the artistic spark. To be an artist is to be the one who finds the soil beneath the shit and plants a seed in it. I didn't hate the dead don't die, but it is missing the spark that makes Jim Jarmusch's films so great. The sarcasm is there, the dry humor is there, the social awkwardness is there, but the appeal to beauty is missing. If art and culture are mirrors of one another, perhaps he's so cynical of culture he doesn't see the beauty anymore. Perhaps it's merely a grim reminder that we are all consuming ourselves to death. That's not enough for me, though. It is a sad and beautiful world. Thank you once again for joining me today. This is Justin C. Bartlett with the Dime Store Cinema, signing off with the reminder to fill your life with amazing stories.